My name is Adam Leonard, and today I am reviewing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch, and directed by Sam Raimi in his long-anticipated return to the director's seat for a Marvel movie. There's a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype that Doctor Strange has to live up to in this movie. Can it stick the landing? Let's find out in this Megadad's review. Every night, I dream the same dream. And then, the nightmare begins. Going into this movie, I had so much anticipation and so much speculation as to what this film was going to be. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness isn't just another Marvel movie, but it's kind of setting the stage as to what the future of these Marvel movies is going to be. Disney has now cast a wider net than ever to bring in more properties that were not previously under their belt. Marvel really set the bar and the expectation of what they're going to be doing going forward with Spider-Man No Way Home bringing in other movie and TV properties into MCU. And with the next movie down the line being Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, meaning bringing in all of these other universes into the MCU proper. So the internet had a lot of um, expectations put on this movie as to what this was going to be. Before we get to all of that kind of stuff and whether or not it delivers on the wild concoctions in people's minds, let's talk about the movie itself. This film starts off with a bang and Sam Raimi is in full swing and it feels very much like it has the DNA of his Spider-Man trilogy all over it. Seeing Sam Raimi direct action in New York City, um, albeit with a different leading character, a different hero, it felt so much like those Spider-Man films accompanied by Danny Elfman's soundtrack. It looked and it sounded and it just felt like Sam Raimi didn't miss a beat. And then it kind of takes a shift and becomes a, a almost like a Sam Raimi's greatest hits record. Uh, the film gets a little bit more scary, a little bit more horrifying as the villain steps into play and uh, reveals themselves to be to be a very cutthroat threat, not only to Doctor Strange and his friends, but the entire multiverse. This film gets very weird and very abstract, incredible moments of visual storytelling that I feel are just perfect for the Doctor Strange universe. Going forward, if Sam Raimi doesn't direct all the Doctor Strange movies, I think that would be an absolute crime, much like in the way that Taika Waititi, he's gotta be the Thor guy. I think Sam Raimi has established himself that he's gotta be the Doctor Strange guy because his unique vision and the way that all of his movies feel so artistically different and very much Sam Raimi. I think he's put his stamp on this character in a way that it's just, he's the perfect fit. The other thing that I think this film does very well to establish for future Doctor Strange movies is this movie is very much Marvel heavy metal. And I think that works exceptionally well for Doctor Strange. They embrace the weirdness, the macabre of you know witchcraft and sorcery. It's not just superpowers. It's all about twisting reality and doing some creepy and dark things. Uh, that really, it really kind of sets the tone for what I think future Doctor Strange movies should be all about. We've got zombies. We've got minotaurs. We've got ghosts. We've got blood and disembodiment is really kind of perfect for Doctor Strange. And it's a little surprising that Disney is going so hard into the violence and the scares and a little bit of the darker edge that these supernatural Marvel characters really deserve. Now, not everything is great in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, in fact, I have quite a few problems with the movie and mostly it's the fact that as Marvel expands this universe into the multiverse, I start to feel kind of the presence of the studio structure behind the movie. And I feel it more so in this movie than any of the other ones before that. And what I mean by that is that when anything can happen in a universe as big as Marvel, uh, when anything can happen at all, it kind of starts to feel a little strange when some of the more obvious things don't happen within the confines of the structure of a movie. 
I'm not going to spoil any of the things that do happen in this movie, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that don't happen. For example, this is a very strong Scarlet Witch story, a very huge moment for that character. And coming off of WandaVision and putting the importance of Vision in her life, it is very strange to not see Vision anywhere in this film. It, it is a very strange omission and one that I, it, it just feels like a studio move, like maybe there was an availability issue with Paul Bettany. And then also some of the inclusions and cameos, which I won't talk about right here, they're put in this film in such a way that they kind of go in and out through the the story mechanic, the story tool of the multiverse that really their addition to the film is superficial at best. Um, they don't really have much consequence lasting outside of this movie. So while on the surface level you see a, you see a character, you see a thing happen, you're like, wow, that's really cool. Ultimately, it's kind of shallow in its meaning because you know, seeing it through the lens of a fractured multiverse doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of everything that's going on. When anything is possible, does anything really matter? And ultimately, I was kind of left feeling that some of the stuff that happened in Multiverse of Madness felt a little empty and it didn't carry as much weight. And I ultimately ended up feeling kind of disappointed with some of the things that it felt like the movie was trying to convey as being some of the bigger oh wow moments of this film. But at the end of the day, this film is a lot of fun and I'm very excited to see Sam Raimi put his stamp on Marvel once again. As a self-contained movie, it is great, it's funny, it's got some really cool action set pieces. It just didn't feel like it left as big of a footprint on Marvel as say, um, No Way Home or some of the bigger, more shockwave Marvel movies. My final score for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is three and a half out of five stars. Things just got out of hand. You break the rules. Look out! To become a hero. I do it, I become the enemy. Same thing.